oil filters. They're as misunderstood as motor oil. Hi, I'm Lake, the motor oil geek. Let's go to the dyno and we'll show you some facts about oil filters. So Don, after our last video mm -hmm. about whether or not you should pre-fill your oil filter. Boy, that got a lot of comments, didn't it? Yeah, and from those comments, it's quite obvious that there are some people that need an education on oil filters. You know, like <clears throat> I've been doing this for so long that I've even had folks come in here that have been around cars forever. And some of these guys really don't know where the oil goes in and comes out of a filter app. <laughs> right. So uh, in this video, we're going to give you three key things that really everyone should know about oil filters. And we're going to begin with basic oil filter construction. So John, where does the oil go in and out of well, the filter? Well, <clears throat> that's a really, really good question. And this is the typical f element mm -hmm. that's inside the filter housing itself. Now, the construction of this element is such that it will trap everything bigger than about 26 micron. How does that relate to, let's say, the human hair, Lake? Uh, human hairs are about 80 to 90 microns, so way smaller. Visible particles, you really can't see smaller than around 40 microns. So the stuff that the filter's capturing, you can't even see. Anything smaller than about 25 microns will go through the system without hurting. Now, as far as the filter itself goes, the oil, it's, and it's really pretty simple, the, the oil will come in around the outside edge of the filter. That way it can go through the medium. Yeah, it comes through the filter so that dirty oil reaches the outside of the filter first, goes through the media, back through this hole here, and then back to your engine. Now we're gonna be doing something interesting here. Like, you wanna kind of explain what we're gonna do here? Yeah, so I said we have the media, right? So you have the housing, you have the media. Mm -hmm. That's kind of your oil filter 101. Yep. But there are a couple more things that are typically present in the oil filter besides just these. In most cars, the oil filters are mounted upside down like this. In our sprint car engines, for example, they're mounted on the oil pump sideways. On some of these filters, there is a little plastic valve that's under here that actually keeps the oil from draining back out of the filter when the filter is mounted sideways like this. The one-way valve? It's a one-way check valve. Did they keep the oil in the filter? So that's correct. a good thing. That way, mm -hmm. it's always the filter's always primed whenever you start the engine. That's correct. Yeah. So that's two things you learned, right? We've got to talk about media a little bit. We've talked about and I drain back a little bit. Now the next thing, this is one of the areas, I'm gonna say, of most confusion when yes. it comes to oil filters. Yes. And that's the bypass valve. The check valve. So what happens in an oiling system? You get some guy that doesn't really pay attention to his oil filter changes and he'll go for 30,000 miles without changing the oil. But what happens is the filter becomes so clogged. The manufacturers say, hey, wait a minute, we don't want to starve that guy's motor for oil. So they'll put a check valve in some of the filters, yep. and I'll explain why in a minute. They'll put a check valve in that filter. So when the filter becomes clogged, it bypasses the filter and keeps feeding the engine oil, even though it's dirty, but it's it's because it's better to have some oil, some oil than no oil. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Here's the, the crux of the issue. This little bypass valve, you can see on those spec sheets, like for example, the Wix 51515 filter, people will see that bypass pressure listed at say seven to nine or say nine to 11 PSI. And they think that is oil pressure. Right, which it's not. No. Which it's not. What they're explaining is a delta. Right, oh, it's a differential a delta. pressure. That's a big, that's a big, a small big word, Blake. Yeah. And what that means is that the bypass valve will only function when the pressure coming in ex far exceeds far exceeds mm -hmm. the pressure going out. In other words, the filter gets clogged. Now, a so lot let's of say it's 10 psi. So if you have 50 psi oil pressure going in, mm -hmm. but you only have 39 psi coming out, that's a differential of 11. If it's set at 10, it will open so that it maintains pressure. Correct on the back side, the flow to the engine itself. Correct, right. When that pressure differential gets that high, whether the filter be clogged or for mm -hmm. whatever reason, the valve will open to keep 
uh, enough oil going to the engine so it won't kill itself. Right. But what most people don't understand is really the only time that happens yeah. is when you have a situation like I just explained where somebody doesn't ever change their oil. And the filter's it's totally clogged. clogged. This bypass valve, both on the Chevy, which is built into the block, the Chevy oil filter, by the way, does not have the bypass valve in it because it's in the block, and the Ford filter, those bypass valves rarely open when you keep a clean filter. So you're saying that if we started this engine up dead cold mm -hmm. with cold oil, yep. that bypass isn't going to open? It's not going to open. It's not how, how do you know that? Oh, gosh, that's going to be the fun part, Lake, because not too long ago, I'm saying, oh, gosh, four or five months ago, we chatted about this and we're thinking, how, how can we do this? Well, we figured out a way. We've modified the oiling system on the mule motor here so that I can measure the oil pressure from the oil pump before it gets to the filter. And then, of course, we're also measuring it after the filter. So we're going to actually measure that, that difference, that delta, and find out truly what it is for hot and cold oil. And we're going to show you right now. We're here at the Dino Council here, and what I'd like to do is actually show you what we are going to be measuring on our dyno screen over here. Okay, the two channels that we're going to be working with on this particular test are the oil pressure out. So this is the oil pressure right here, the oil pressure in the main oil galley that's already gone through the filter. This is what everybody normally checks. This is the new one that we hooked up. This is a sensor that's hooked up on the oil pressure that's going into the filter. This one that says block pressure. We've already primed the engine. We'll go ahead and give her a start. Oil pressure in the main galley. Oil pressure before the filter. Oil's cold, 1700 RPM. So what we're gonna do now, you see the screen, the main screen that we're on right now, I'm gonna flop it over to the to screen number seven, where we explained before, you've got the oil pressure going out of the filter and the oil pressure coming into the filter here. Now you can see just at 2700 RPM right now, what we got is about a three, three and a half to four pound differential. I'm gonna make a pull record it and we can watch what that pressure differential does so you guys will know exactly what's happened. So I'm gonna do a quick test here, which is easy on this dyno. Now we're back to our set point and we'll check out some data. Wow, that was interesting. Well, like we kind of had an idea about what was going to happen because we've done a little bit of this before, but actually what's happening here, do you think about this? So when the engine oil is cold, mm -hmm. okay, it doesn't flow past bearing surfaces and the, all the internal leaks, remember. The viscosity is higher. The viscosity is higher and remember, the inside of the engine is a bunch of leaks. It's a bunch of leaks. Right. So when we first fired this thing up with the engine cold, our delta, our difference in oil pressure, which we are now mm -hmm. able to measure, was only about one and a half PSI. Yeah, really low. It was really, and that's at a steady RPM, warming the oil, the engine up. Now, the interesting part is, is that as the engine oil started to come up to temperature, that delta, that difference in pressure started to become greater. Because the viscosity is going down. Because the viscosity is going down and all the built-in internal leaks of the engine past all the bearing surfaces, camshaft surface and so forth, the oil was flowing past those a lot easier now. It's leaking So more. that it, it made the oil filter look like there was more restriction. restriction. Which, because the delta was higher. Right. The oil filter will have a built-in restriction. Every oil filter will do yeah, that. Even Except that... for, remember that steel one that we had? Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, I can talk about that. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the wire screen filter, yeah, it flowed a lot of oil. It flowed great. But it didn't filter hardly anything. Yeah, yeah, it, it let a lot of stuff pass by. So the filter is actually doing its job. But one of the things that we kind of proved along the way, mm -hmm about the bypass valve. Yeah, it didn't open. And you can tell that from watching the curve. So as the engine speed increases, it's 
it's a positive displacement pump. Oil pressure going to the filter went up. Mm -hmm. and as pressure, normal. As normal. The pressure the, differential after it just followed. It just went, they just tracked side by side they did. the whole way. The pressure went up before the filter, but the pressure also went up after the filter and they went up the same amount and they never reached that delta. Now they never got past like seven PSI. So if it's like eight to 11 PSI bypass, bypass valve, pressure, mm -hmm. it the bypass it. valve is not opening. Now again, no. we, Lake and I talked about this. 30,000 miles on an oil change, somebody screwed up and the filter is black, it's dirty. That bypass valve is going to open. Right. That's what it was designed for. But if you're keeping your oil fresh and you're keeping your oil filter clean, the chances of that oil, that bypass under every situation, the, that bypass isn't going to open. Now here's the thing. If you've made it this far into this video, I think it means you're kind of interested in oil filters. So we actually have a couple more videos one about that wire screen yes, filter. Yes, yes. Where we literally tested the efficiency of filters by putting iron powder in this engine. We tried to destroy the damn thing. We did. And one filter did a really great job and one filter did a really bad job. We'll leave a link for that video in the description box below. Yep. And if the pre-filling the oil filter video wasn't enough for you the first time, we did a second test between 5W20 and 20W50 to see if there was a difference. We'll leave a link for that video in the description box below as well. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, you should, because you're gonna wanna see more from this guy and that guy in the future. We're learning a lot and so are you.